Hey everybody, this is Steve Moore, owner of Run More, this brick and mortar running shop located in Westminster, Maryland. Today we'll be discussing the Hoka Bondi 8. Thank you so much for taking some time to check out our reviews. If you can, do me a favor and like and subscribe to our channel. It's an easy and free way to support our store. So today, the Hoka Bondi 8. The version 7 had been out for two years. We're very excited to get version 8 here. The Bondi, and by the way, I'm calling it Bondi, not Bondi. Everybody calls it Bondi, so before all those persnickety people start commenting below, it is to me the Bondi, not the Bondi, even though technically that's what it's supposed to be called. Nobody calls it that. So, the Bondi. This is a max cushion neutral shoe, and I think of all the Hoka shoes out there, this is sort of the most Hoka of the Hoka shoes. I think when people come in and they say, I want to try the Hoka, in their head, this is sort of the shoe that they're envisioning. It is their most billowy, biggest cushion, sort of most bulky looking shoe that they have out there. And I think when people see this shoe, it's got a very iconic look to it. You know, when you sort of look at other Hoka shoes, especially now how they're sort of changing a lot of shoes that have a lower stack height, a more racy feel to it. This still has that true look of a max cushion neutral shoe. And you know, I always tell the story, but you know, as I opened the store back in 2014, we, we were carrying Hoka's from the beginning. And you know, this was a shoe that people would pick up off the wall and compare it to other stuff from other brands. And they would say like, this shoe seems so wacky. And I don't know if this whole trend is gonna last. And now you look on our wall or you look at other manufacturers out there. And a lot of them have a shoe that looks sort of similar to a Hoka Bondi. There's a lot of that big, fluffy, max cushion feel that you're seeing across the line from other manufacturers that really started with the Hoka and really is sort of epitomized in the Bondi. Um, as I said, this is a max cushion neutral shoe. This is the most cushioned shoe that Hoka makes. Um, you know, what I will say about versions before, this was where I would kind of get into sort of philosophical debates um, with customers, is I, I found there are other shoes that to me were almost softer than the previous Bondi versions. You know, I think to me when, even though this is a max cushion shoe and this is their biggest cushion, it wasn't as soft as some of the other stuff from Hoka. You know, personally, when I put on a shoe like the Clifton, which is the mid cushion neutral version, technically one step down in cushion, I found it to be softer than this. I sort of always equate it to, if you think about like a Hoka Clifton as sort of being like a sponge, you know, there's like air pockets in it that sort of compress and expand as you're sitting in it, where I always felt the Bondi was more of like a solid piece of cushion underfoot, so you sort of sat on top of the cushion, you know, so sort of just two different ways of feeling about it. This, you're tall like on a riser, and then on the Clifton, you were sort of more bouncy, and the shoe would sort of expand and pop with you. So I felt to me underfoot, and a lot of people felt that way, that the Clifton was more of a cushion shoe than the Bondi, even though this shoe was classified more as a max cushion shoe. I feel like things have sort of switched a little bit with version 8. This shoe now is a softer shoe than it used to be. So this to me feels a little bit more of what I felt like the old one should have felt like or maybe sort of what people might envision when they're putting on a Bondi compared to other Hoka shoes out there. They've made this shoe in a new midsole. They're not really giving it like a, a name. They're just saying a more soft, responsive, and resilient midsole. And uh, you know, when we're looking through our catalogs and sort of notes that we get from the manufacturers on things that we can articulate better about a changes from version to version, resilient was a word that they really put out there. Because I think a lot of people that have come from Hoka's, that was one of the things that got a lot of feedback to us from just a store to people to Hoka was they didn't last as long. You know, if you're putting on a shoe that costs a good bit amount of money. You know, the old one was 150. This one is now $165. So like everything, the price went up. It's up about 10%. But if you got a shoe like this and it only lasted a few months, you know, you're a little disappointed in the experience and you might start looking for older versions or you might start looking for other brands out there because that was sort of a knock that these shoes weren't lasting as long. So resilient midsole, resilient, more durable crash pad and outsole was one of the things they really wanted to try to improve upon on this version from previous versions. So um, that's a nice positive change is that they're trying to find something that's just as light, just as airy, just as pillowy, but is gonna give you a little bit more life expectancy. And I think what I always kind of talk to people is that when you have a shoe that looks this big, that is this sort of cushiony, something's gotta give, right? You know, you can't have something that's really airy, but also gonna last a thousand miles most of the time, the shoe is just gonna get flatter over time. And you know, a lot of these shoes will break down from the inside versus the outside. So like it might feel, f might look like it still is holding shape. It's not like it's like a flat pancake, but the, the, the cushion on the inside is now squished down. 
Um, and so if you felt that too fast on the old ones, it might keep you, it'll give you trepidation on upgrading to a shoe that's more expensive um, and a new version of the same guy. But you know, they're really putting a lot of effort in that resiliency and improvement between the seven to the eight. So one of the other things that to me was always sort of a barrier of entry when coming into a Hoka, specifically a Bondi, was like, it's a big looking shoe. You know, when you're, whether you're looking at version seven or version eight, it's a lot of shoe. And you know, we would have people that would come in and say, I want to try the Hoka. My friends have spoke so highly of the brand, but I just think they're going to look giant on my feet. And we hear it from, from all walks of life of people like, I just, I don't want to look like I'm wearing a clown shoe, but I want that cushion and comfort. And I think that's why for like, for our store, and I think for a while still with Hoka, the Clifton was still their best selling shoe. People might find the Bondi because it looks like the big comfortable shoe, but they might come in and say, I want that, but I don't necessarily want that big of a package. So we might find another Hoka out there that would give them a lot of the cushion without being such a big shoe. But one of the things that they really did on the Bondi 8, in my opinion, is, is they made these nice horizontal lines that doesn't, doesn't make it feel like it's as big of a shoe. It has like a more sleek appearance to it. It has a more streamlined look to it compared to previous versions. And in fact, not only was that obviously something they were trying to do by make it look like a less of a in your face kind of shoe, the heel is just a little bit lower. I guess it's a little better comparison to show a similar shoe. So these are both women's size sixes, version seven versus version eight. And the heel is sitting a little bit lower on it. So it still has the same stack height of cushion. It still has the same four millimeter drop. It still has the same Hoka rocker to it. Um, it's just not quite aesthetically looking as bulky you're sort of sitting in the middle of the shoe. You're not quite like on top of it before. Like you're sort of surrounded by all this nice fluffy foam and loveliness to it without being like so aggressively in your face. This shoe now has a lot of the same streamlines and characteristics that they had in the Bondi X. The Bondi X came out last year and it was a max cushion racing shoe. It had a Bondi look to it with a carbon plate to it. It also had these horizontal lines and it also had this extended heel to it that gave it a little more of that Hoka roll to it. So it had a little extra geometry in it to give it the shoe that more iconic roll to it. And they took some of those characteristics from the Bondi X and added it to the regular Bondi 8. So it gives us a nice, fast, even more rolly, smooth feel in a shoe without having the carbon plated, carbon plated racing vibe that they're going to on the Bondi X. You know, it's also why they sort of made the Bondi X to give you a shoe that if you were training every day in a Bondi, but then you wanted to have something different on race day, it was a really easy pivot to go from a Bondi to a Bondi X in a shoe that's more carbon plated and race specific. Something maybe you might not train in every day, but something you'd have on race day. Um, you know, I actually always kind of equated to like, swinging a baseball bat with a donut on it and then taking it off on race days. You know, you have that trainer that you use all the time that has a little bit more heft to it, weighs a little bit more, and then you go on race day and you have a shoe that weighs less but has a lot of the same characteristics on what you've been training in, all of a sudden you feel that much more fast and that's sort of where the Bondi X fits in in this equation. So this shoe has a little bit more of that extended geometry to it, to it so it has an even smoother ride to it and that's really what, you know, the whole Hoka idea of that efficient shoe that has a little bit of a curve to it that rolls when you walk and run in it. it it just kind of makes sense. You know, we talk about when somebody's wearing another max cushion shoe in the store, you can sort of hear that slappy feel if the midsole is too stiff. And you think about what that means on your body. And on this shoe, like it just glides with you. It's so smooth underfoot. And you can almost kind of think about how that's going to impact your body on landing when you're protected and you're smooth and you're not so jarring to the system when you're putting your foot down. So this shoe still has all of the same Hoka characteristics, but better. It's now softer, the extended heel geometry, lower platform, but same same Hoka feel, same drop, same stack height. And really, they talk about it being lighter than before. It's not, the weight's the same. The men's and women's are within a 10th of an ounce of each other. So really, it's not that it's any more soft or lighter than before, but it feels more airy. And now by, we've added some features to it, but we didn't add the weight by adding the features to it, which is kind of nice. I also found the upper on this is a nice improvement from previous, the previous Bondi. This one just didn't extend as much. You know, it had all these little little overlays on it that were designed to kind of not let the shoe seam out. But the problem is, is that unless you had the width right, it was very easy to have this shoe feel too narrow. This one has a little bit more of a stretchy feel to it. It's also made from, part of it's made from recycled materials. It has a little more stretch to it. So this one actually to me fits a little bit wider than the previous version. And like previous versions, this is the only Hoka shoe that comes in a 4E. You're gonna be able to get this shoe in a standard, you'll be able to get it in a 2E on the men's and a 4E. This is the only guy out there currently that they have in their pipeline that's gonna be a 4E option. 
I will say, I think that's one of the misses on the Hoka's lineup in general, is this shoe being a neutral shoe, so somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of pronation one way or the other, somebody who's not supinating, somebody who's not overpronating, um, this shoe is just a neutral shoe, meaning whatever your natural inclination is, it's not gonna push or pull you any which way to keep you more neutral. So somebody who might have a more flat foot or somebody who needs more guidance, typically sometimes, you know, we, we sell more wide shoes to somebody who needs stability than somebody who's just straight neutral. I wish they would make a 4E version of the Gavi versus the Bondi. And I think even in store, and I think probably even from Hoka, the 2E was a really good version, was a really good seller in version 7. The 4E wasn't as much, but we get asked all the time for other Hoka models in a 4E besides the Bondi. So that's just sort of one of the things that I would like to see. But one of the things they did add that makes this shoe a little bit more, more uh, appealing for somebody who does have some stability issues is they gusseted the tongue. So on just the medial side, they sewed in the tongue a little bit on this side to give a little bit of extra stability to just the medial side of the shoe. Still neutral, but just a little bit more support on the inside than we had on previous versions. I think when you add in the way that that shoe was available in 4E, I think when you add in sort of the look and feel of the Bondi 7 and the way that it felt denser underfoot, I think there's a lot of people that felt that that shoe was very stable because of the way that the shoe was constructed. But really, you know, we, we would have more people that we would end up in a Gaviota, which is the stable version of this shoe, than in the, in the Bondi that had any stability issues. People would come in and we'd see a lot of the wear patterns on the inside and the outside, and they say, I'm wearing a very stable shoe, I'm wearing the Bondi. We ended up pivoting them to a different shoe that had the same character characteristics, but more of that stable platform. But if you're somebody who just needs a neutral, cushion, pillowy, fluffy, soft, all day, resilient shoe that's available in wides and extra wides in the men's and standard and D width in the women, the Bondi 8's a great option. And even with the 10% bump up to $165 on this shoe, I think especially by adding the resiliency to it, it's a great no-brainer upgrade. It looks better, it comes in great colors, it comes in width, it's softer, it's stretchier, it's a great update. Um, if you have any questions on the shoe, feel free to leave it down below. We'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. And if you want to purchase this shoe or any other fine shoes on our website, enter promo code RUNMORE. Just one word, and uh, we'll ship it out 10% off and with free shipping. So that'll knock this guy down to about what the old shoe cost, actually a buck less at 149 bucks. So thank you so much for checking out our channel. And uh, if you're out in the Maryland area, swing by our shop and uh, come check out the new Bondi and anything else out there. Thanks, and uh, have an awesome day. Thank you.